In this video today, we're going to take a look at how we can create an F system uh, for our 2D Metroidvania in Godot 4.4. We're going to create an art that's going to display uh, a number of art. We're going to make sure that we can lose uh, one art and display it. And then we're going to also damage the player when he's going to enter into the collision uh, hitbox of the enemy. Uh, this is an important episode because I'm doing this one. And then after that, I'm going to show you how I can kill the, 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 the player and display the animation and the Kind of thing for the game and then i will show you how to create a soul system the very similar to what you have in hollow knight so when you slash an enemy you are, are like globally charging a little bar and then after that you can use to refilling your number of life uh, so this is a very important episode so make sure that you follow it because it's going to be important for the rest of the of the series if you like the channel but please like and subscribe and if you want to support me i put a list of my course in the uh, description of this video right now i'm updating the uh, procedurally generated roguelite uh, it's gonna be soon finished finally it's been like a, a quite some months now that I'm working on it uh, but I'm almost almost done I have like six videos left to record so that's gonna be good so anyway let's get started so for having our player uh, getting damaged, we need to have an L system. So that's what we're going to start to create. So I can't remember if we have created a global script yet. No, we didn't. So uh, here, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to script. I'm going to go to file and I'm going to go to new script. Uh, that new script going to inherit a node to this. So you click, I'm going to reshow you. You click on that button right here and you're going to be able to choose to choose the node that it is inheriting from. So here it's going to be node 2D. Uh, and uh, that new script, I'm going to call it globals globals I'm gonna put it in its own folder so I think I'm gonna put it into um, probably UI I'm gonna put it there and I'm gonna click on uh, the folder for creating a script uh, folder and I'm gonna save it right there I think that's the, the, the best way to do it uh, so here what I want to do is I just want to create a variable that I'm gonna call elf Elf, and I'm going to set it to be equal to 4. That's it. So now, uh, what I want is I want that script to be uh, reachable by all the script around. So for that, what we need to do is we need to go to Project, Project Setting, and here we go to uh, Globals, and here we're going to take a look at where our uh, script is located. So for me, it's in UI and Script, and we take Globals, and we put it here and we add and because here it is enabled now that's a class that we're going to be able to access from all the script around so now that this is done what we can do is uh, we can start to uh, globally create what's going to show the number of lights that we have so for that we need to create a gui so i go back to to the here i go back to my level one here and i'm going to click on the plus and i'm going to look for a node that is called a canva layer that canva layer is a, is a, is a node that is um, loading data in an, over, in an overlay. So globally what it means is that you, uh, you always have an overlay of uh, things to display that are uh, not related to the position of the player. So it doesn't move with the player, those kind of things, which is good. That's what we need. So that uh, canva layer, I'm going to rename it GUI, like this. And I'm going to attach to it a sprite 2D. Sprite 2D. The sprite 2D, I'm going to rename it Art that's what we're going to display and i'm going to drag in my ui folder i have a script here a script sprite folder here and i have the art sprite sheet right there so what i'm going to do with with my art uh, sprite selected here i'm going to drag this one into the empty slot and now we have the uh, sprite sheet that appears so we have one two three four five so i go to animation and i put that at five so now what i want to do is i want also to change the i uh, think the transform i'm going to change the scale i'm going to put it at two like this and so globally what uh, what you have to understand is that uh we globally gonna uh how to say i'm gonna first save that and i'm gonna launch the game to see why display it display you see at the, the 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 corner right here so what we need to do here is we need to get our gui uh our GUI um, node right there. And our GUI node is around here. So we need to move our art something like here. I'm gonna toggle the snap and the grid snap. And I'm gonna put something like this just so it's easier to, uh, to set up. So now if I launch the game, you're gonna see it's right there. So that's perfect. Yeah, the light changed because I closed. It was like way too much sun and then no sun at all. It was like very distracting. So 
uh, globally here we have our R that is displaying now. So that's cool. So now what we need to do is uh, we need to create a script uh, on the GUI. So I'm going to create a script here and I'm going to put it into my UI uh, folder right here. I'm going to put it into the script right there and I'm going to save it right here. I'm going to click on create and now what I want to do is I want to uh, create a way to uh, display the number of R that I want. So for that I need first to create a constant that I'm going to call R underscore row underscore size and I'm going to set it to be equal to 8. So this means that we won't be able to have more than 8 uh, heart on one line. Uh, and then after that what I need to do is I need to create a constant to um, space the art so they don't stack uh, one uh, onto each other globally. Uh, and so for that it's going to be called art underscore offset and I'm going to uh, offset it from 16 pixels like this. So now what I need to do is I need to go here to my ready function and here I'm going to pass uh, a, a for loop for uh, creating the, the number of art depending of the number of life that we have in our global script. So here I'm going to say for i in globals.elf you can see that now we can uh, uh, detect that uh, global script that we have created right here. So now what we want to do here is we want to create a variable that's going to be called new heart and I'm going to set it to be equal to a sprite 2 d dot new. This is going to uh, create a sprite 2D directly here. Then after that, what I want to do is I want to copy globally my art uh, texture and my art H frame. So like this, the new art that we're going to instance, going to uh, already have all the, the, the things set up right here. That's what I'm going to do here. So for that, I need to do new art dot, dot texture. And here I'm going to set it to be equal to my art uh, dot texture. So here it's very important, like if you have uh, renamed that another name that uh, uh, than me, for example, you need to put that name here. Like if you have renamed it pizza, you need to put pizza here, for example. It's very important, otherwise it will not work. Then after that, you need to copy the edge frames. The edge frame here is going to be equal to the art dot edge frame. And then finally, what we need to do is we just need to uh, globally like add our, uh, our new art. So for that, I'm going to use the art uh, that we have right here. So I'm going to say uh, art dot add underscore child and in between parentheses, we're going to pass the new art. So right now, if I launch the game, uh, we're not going to have uh, anything that's going to display. You're going to see we still have one art. But if I go here to remote, I go to level and I go to GUI. Now if I go to art, you can see I have four arts that are like uh, displaying. So they are all there, but they are stacked on top of each other. That's what. Uh, that's why I have created those uh, those variables here, because now what we're going to do is we're going to use them. So for that, what we need to do is uh, actually we need to go into the process. And here in the process, what we need to do is we need to make a for loop as well. So here I'm going to say for uh, art in uh, art.getChildren, art.art dot get underscore children. So here we're going to loop through all the uh, children that art has uh, instance. So all the new art that we have created right here. Uh, and here what I need to do is I need to create a new variable and I'm going to call index and I'm going to set it to be equal to art dot get underscore index like this. So here it's going to take all the, the, the art that I instantiated to uh, the get children right here. Then we need to create uh, we need to create some little calculation to be able to use our constants so we space things right. So here we're gonna uh, start with the x-axis, so the horizontal axis. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our index. We're gonna uh, use the modulo sign and we're gonna get our art row size and we're gonna multiply it by uh, the art offset. Yeah, art uh, art offset like this. Then we need to do the same thing for y, but this time we have a little uh, difference. So here we need to do the index and divide it by our r row size. R row size. So like this, that will make it go on the second line if we are like uh, reaching a certain certain amount of uh, of art. And then we also multiply it by the art of set to make sure that everything is like uh, separated well. And then what we need to do is we need to uh, set our art dot position to be equal to our vector with the x and y that are uh, set up. So now let's have a look. Now we have 
or uh, for art are spaced right there. And if I want to space them a little bit more, for example, I can do something like this. I can do like, uh, I'm gonna do 20. And here it's gonna space them a bit more, you see? So that's the logic of it. I think 16 is all right, but this is up to you, like uh, you do your thing. Uh, so now what we need to do is we need to assign the uh, right uh, element uh, of the art spreadsheet to display according if we have a life or if we lose a life. So for that, what we need to do is we need to continue our loop. And here we need to create a new variable that I'm gonna call last underscore art. And that last art, I'm gonna set it to be equal to floor and I'm gonna pass my globals dot health. If you've never used a uh, floor before, floor is uh, a way to make sure that uh, you run the, uh, you always run the number if it's uh, if it's a decimal. Uh, that's something that is useful to um, making sure that uh, you don't have too much error in terms of uh, of, uh, of numbers that are created globally. It's, it's a bit, I'm, I'm explaining it badly right now. But <laughs> get a, take a look at the floor uh, floor uh, uh, method run x downward toward negative infinity, returning the largest number, uh, all number that is not more than x. So globally, like you can see, var a equal floor 2.99, a is 2, but if floor is minus 2.99, a is minus 3. That's basically what uh, we are doing right here. <laughs> I think it's more clear this way. Uh, so now we need to get our index. And if our index is greater than last art, then what we need to do here is we need to set our art dot frame to be equal to zero. Zero is the first index right here. So this is zero, this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four. Uh, and so here, if our index is greater than last R, that means that we have lost, uh, we have lost life. So we need to display zero. Then what we need to do is we need to do if index double equal last R, then here what we need to do is we need to get our art dot frame to be equal to globals dot elf minus last last art and then out of the parenthesis we need to time it by times it by four here uh, this is useful because this is what we're going to use if you want to use a quarter of uh, of art this is globally the line that controls that that's what we go uh, we are globally doing here and then what we need to do is we need to uh, get our index so if index this time is smaller than last part then what we need to do here is we need to get our art dot frame to be equal to four. So here we are displaying a full heart. So with that done, now if I launch the game, we're going to have four red art. So now we need to lose uh, one heart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my uh, enemy here and I'm going to make sure when he detect the player that he can uh, remove one life. So for that, we need to go back to our uh, tick tick. Where is it? Tick tick puff. And I have my tick tick right here. So uh, here, my hitbox is right there, and I have an hitbox uh, area enter. So here, this is detecting the sword, but I want also to detect the player. So for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my hitbox of my tick tick, and I'm going to go to the node signal. I'm going to go to body enter, connect, and I'm going to connect it to my tick tick. So I'm going to connect it here, and so here, what I want to do is I want to say if body dot is underscore in underscore group and here we're going to look for a group player that i don't think we have created yet no we did we didn't we're going to create it then here what i want to do is just i want to say globals dot elf minus equal one and actually what i can do is better than that i can create an export right here so i'm going to create an export var i'm going to create damage and uh, i'm going to set it to be equal to i'm going to set it to be equal to a float it's going to be a float by default, and I'm going to set it to 1.0, right? So here, I'm going to replace the 1 by damage. The reason why I do that is because I'm, I'm going to show you how you lose quarter of life after that. Uh, so now we just need to make sure that we can collide. So the hitbox collide with is on 3, and it collides with 2. But we also need to make sure that it collides with 1. So at least it can collide with the player. And we need to go to the player. We need to go here on the player itself. We need to go to node, group. And here we click on the plus and we're going to create the group player. So now my player is in that group. So, and you can see we have a little uh, little square right here that is showing. So now technically speaking, that should work. So uh, I come here. I just need to make sure that my player can also detect the tick tick. So 
what is the collision is on one and one so we in the tick tick is on three so we need to have the player right here that uh, also detect three so now let's have a look i'm coming here and i'm gonna just jump when he's around here normally i should lose one life voila i lose one life and so now i can lose life as you see but if i die like uh, like i don't have <laughs> for now i don't die that's not what i was looking to show you now that we have done that what we need to do is we need to go to the tick tick and here we're going to be able to get the damage and here i'm going to put that at minus five for example uh, uh, dot five sorry and it's going to lose one half voila and if i put for example do to 25 it's going to lose uh i need to go back here I'm going to lose one quarter. Voila, you can see it works. So that's good. So now this is how you set up uh, an elf system into Godot and how you can uh, get the player damage and those kind of things. And so with that, we are good. So now what we need to do is we need to code the dead function, but the dead function, we need also to have the dead animation and to do some setup. So I will do that in, the, in a future video where I will show you how to properly uh, um, display the dead animation and reload the game. So that's it for me. I hope this video has been helpful for you. If it's the case, don't hesitate to give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Me, I want to thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!